Hello, I'm Lucy, this is Scott, we're from VicAct and we are here today with episode two of our Week in Vic. Thank you very much to everyone who watched our very first Week in Books last week. Only, um, only the three down thumbs, so we thought we'd probably give it another go. Yeah, see if we so get we're four. Like, we can, we'll give it three down <laughs> thumbs. We'll see if we can beat it this week. But and I'll say that so far. There's always always room for a few more time. down thumbs. Everyone's going to go back and do it again now. Um, what I was going to say was thank you very much for everyone saying nice things. So we're going to keep doing it. We're going to see. We're just going to see where it goes. Yep. So today, I've got three things I want to talk to you about before um and i genuinely have no idea what they are yeah so... do you know what actually i've like been like deliberately not telling him <laughs> things this week so that we can do this on camera and i can get his reaction um, but it's been really hard really hard i just wanted to say anything so we've got three things we've got one pretty ridiculous we've got one that's just i just thought was interesting and one that's a little bit more serious that we're no, going to talk to you serious. about, and then we'll tell serious. you what we're That's reading. That's how the down thumbs are coming, and we're like, oh, I've been serious. They might it. come for the ridiculous thing, just you wait. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. Um, but before we go into that, I also wanted to say that we have a little bit of book hacks news this week, which was really exciting, and I want to share, because you do know what this, he knows this bit. So, over at bookhacks.com, we hit, well, I, was, I don't know if it actually happened this week, but we only I discovered think we probably it noticed. this week. <laughs> we only noticed this week, but we now have users from 100 countries across the world. That's across pretty, the whole world. It is amazing. It's, it's one and, thing, the global oh. nature has always completely blown my mind because we've sat here and, and we work here within like our little corner of the UK and actually the fact that people from yeah. pretty much every country I can think, I can't think of any that haven't. It is, I think it's I haven't seen anyone from the Vatican City. But... Yeah, Vatican City, get yourselves on bookhacks.com. <laughs> but other than that, I think it's actually pretty much the coolest thing that we've discovered yeah. along the way, 100 countries. Thank you guys very much. And, oh, why don't you give us a shout out in the comments below and tell us where in the world you are watching from. Yeah. Hello from the south coast of the UK. Can Hello. I start now? Yes. <laughs> okay, right. So, the first thing, that I wanted to talk about this week, once you um, once you hear what it is, you'll, you'll understand, is that this week, the new edition of the Scrabble Dictionary was published. <laughs> By the way, I hate Scrabble. I know. If, 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 if you couldn't have guessed, it's like, how to lose. Okay, like... and we're gonna play a little game in a minute oh, because the... it has had 300 new words added. Now, the reason that I was so excited to see this um, it's because Scrabble's a bit of a thing in, well, I was going to say our family, but actually more in my family, because my dad, hello dad if you're watching, is a bit Scrabble obsessed, but frankly, nobody wants to play against him, ever. I think um, I've won one game out of about 200 attempts. I think I've won none ever. It's a miserable, miserable experience, because he is frankly just too good. And one reason, also, is that actually, he is a stickler for the rules, but his own version of the rules. And he has a Scrabble dictionary that is approximately from 1975, I reckon. And it's only, it's basically a pamphlet. I'm There's sure no words in it. Is he just like... Well, you see, this is where I was going. Because every time we play, um, I'm like, that's a word. And he's like, that is not a word. It is not in my dictionary. And I'm like, look, twerking, twerking. I got all my letters down. And he's like, twerking is not a word, Lucy. And I'm like, <laughs> you tell that to Nicki Minaj, frankly. Um, so, Guess what word made it into <laughs> it really is, is it? the new dictionary? <laughs> Twerk! It's now in there. But what I thought we would do... Oh yeah, so we bought him um, a new updated dictionary a couple of years ago, but he will not respect the authority of this dictionary, <laughs> so it's still miserable playing Scrabble against him. Anyway, so I'm going to test Scott on a couple of the new words that have made it into the dictionary and see if he gets them. And you guys can play along at home too and tell us I if you've got any I don't consent to this, I really in don't. In the comments, what? are you ready? <laughs> yeah. They start quite easy. So Scott, do you know what face palm means? Probably, probably actually quite, yeah. What I'm about to do yeah. right now. <laughs> so we do that a lot, playing Scrabble against my dad. Um, beat down. This mm. also is relevant to the context of playing against are, my are dad. You, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it is an overwhelmingly thrashing defeat. Yeah. Beat down. So that's now in the dictionary. They're going to get harder. Um, Bizjet. Now this is one he would definitely dispute. 
Biz jet. Biz jet. A business jet. A private, yes. private aeroplane. What? Actually, yeah. A small plane used for business. He would not accept that, even if it was in the, <laughs> even if it was in the dictionary. Um, zomboid. Z-O-M-B-O-I-D. Zomboid. Anybody know what zomboid means? No. Some zombie. <gasps> You're doing better than I thought you would, actually. <laughs> zombie Res robot or something. I don't know. Ah, resembling zombies. So, oh, okay. when I wake up in the morning... A little bit zomboid. Okay. Right. If you get this, if you get this, high five. Okay. I don't even know how to say it. Quapic. Q A P I K. Who knows what a quapic is? I don't know. Is it some sort of like OT, OT cereal? I don't know. <laughs> it's not an OT cereal. It is not an OT cereal. It is a unit of currency in Azerbaijan. There you go. Oh, yeah. If there's anyone watching from Azerbaijan, hello. We now know all about your currency. So there you go. That was my first ridiculous bit of news okay. from the week. Shall I move on to the second bit? Yeah. Right. So I saw that um, there was an auction for a first edition book written by, oh, what was his name? Ernest Shackle. Oh, God, I have to check this. Oh, dear. Ernest Shackleton. Now, Ernest Shackleton wrote this book with his little team of explorers mm -hmm. um, when he went to Antarctica. And it was, in fact, the first book ever published in Antarctica. And it was, in fact, made on the back of an oatmeal box. All right. There you go. Interesting fact. Yeah. And there were only a hundred of them made, and it sold this week at auction for how much do you reckon? Oh, some books go for a lot. 50,000. Oh, $97,500. $97,500. $97 and do you know what? Even better, I said they made 100. Only 70 have been accounted for. Oh, so we need to go so, looking in our attics for that. Everyone, <laughs> go check your attic. I'm fairly sure it's not in ours. <laughs> it's not in our attic, but you know, it might be in somebody's. So even if, even if some of them have not stood the test of time, there's up to 30 of them out there. That, that would make be you... such a nice little know, random random thing. Or you just in some charity shop and you just see this book that's probably half full into pieces and it's like, oh, it's And the rest, yeah. Two pounds get and you, you get home and it's like, oh, it's a hundred pounds. I should probably pounds. tell you what it's called in case you're looking, shouldn't I? Oh, it it is, um, I didn't put him in write the name down. It's yeah, something like- boy. that's a down thumb. <laughs> down thumb, Aurora. <laughs> Australasia, something like okay. that. Aurora, Aurora Australasius, something like that. Look it up, look it up. You can Google it yourself. Oh, do you know what, actually? I didn't know until pretty recently, actually, how to tell if you had a first edition book. Because they're the ones that are worth the money if you hang on yeah, to them for yeah, long first enough, aren't they? First printing. And even though I've written books, I didn't know how to tell them until you told me. So people out there are probably all like, yeah, we know. Do you want to tell them how? Because you told me. There's a load of random numbers at the front, and they don't not normally in order from like one to ten. Should we show you them? No. Okay, fine. Well, I don't know. Is there any around? Is the outside know. one? Actually, yeah, we should have prepared this. This, this is a Sorry. bit random. Oh, th this one's quite obvious. It says one. So that's, that's oh, there you go. different problems. That's one way to, way. to tell. Yeah. But um, yeah, also they're on that same page. There's like a series of numbers, isn't there? And yeah. if you've got all the numbers between one and ten, it's a first edition. It's the first, first edition. Printing. First printing, so hang on to it, and one day... It may be worth something. It may be worth something. So there you go. That was my second bit of news. My third bit of news was about book prizes. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, but this is worth chatting about, because the Goldsmiths Prize released their shortlist this week. A couple okay. of, book, a couple of book, the Booker ones are on there. Um, and the Kirkus Prize released their... What prize? Finalist, Kirkus. Never heard of it. Kirkus Review! All right, this is not the point of the conversation. They've released their finalists as well. But I saw a tweet by Galley Beggar Press and they had noticed that there has been a rule change in the women's prize. Um, but actually... A men are allowed to win, isn't it? No, not that rule, <laughs> not that rule change. Um, uh. All about what you pay to enter. And I'm kind of interested. I know you're going to have thoughts on this. So I'm pretty sure that you pay to enter the prizes Full stop. I'm not 100% sure on that, you... but mm -hmm. I didn't know that if you are shortlisted for you then certain more. prizes, you pay more. And then if you win, you pay even more. So I wrote down how much they want you to pay. So 
So I'm going to bring it over here so I'm not just staring over there. Well, there's all sorts of rules. It's a bit like it's publishers crazy. are only allowed to submit one book or like different yeah. imprints and so they were like as well with the so, booker it was like if you'd won in the past you're allowed to release like add more books yeah, and yeah. stuff now but if, you, if, if, you, if you're an author and you're a, a, an imprint with a lot of famous authors you're doomed because they've probably got it written to their contracts so they have to be submitted yeah. so you're not even going to get submitted so. it is bonkers it really is so um if you are long listed for the women's prize your publisher has to pay five thousand pounds yeah. and then if you are shortlisted now you have to pay an extra one thousand for the booker, it's five thousand if you're yeah. shortlisted, and five thousand, an extra five thousand pounds. Your publisher has to pay. Yeah, the thing of the extra publicity. Well, you that's can't, their you can't buy it. Well, mm, I'm going to come to that. They're definitely selling five thousand more books. Yeah, and the Costa, you get, you have to pay five thousand pounds if you're on the shortlist, and an extra three thousand pounds if you win any of the categories. But like the booker, if you make it onto the shortlist, you get two and a half thousand pound anyway. So they're just like giving. Oh money yeah, but they're taking the, the money from the publishers, and the prize money goes to the authors. But, but why are they taking the money from the publishers when they have like massive? Because they're giving them a, a ridiculous amount of free publicity. Come on, any of those shortlisted books have probably just sold fifty thousand copies overnight. I get. I, I'd actually be interested to know the spike, but it would it would be massively bit. So they're getting the money back. But but the authors. If I published a book, I would pay there. five thousand pounds to promote it via the shortlisted. Oh, come on. <laughs> some of the books, though, some of the books are so niche that I would wonder whether their authors are even getting, like, the 10 grand that there's going to be paid by the publisher to the prize. They probably didn't even get paid that by the publisher to write the book in the first place. Yeah, they're going to get then get royalties, aren't yeah, they, but down the line? Yeah. I, what, I, you're I, saying it's fine? I, I'm saying that no, every publisher is going to pay the money because... But what if they're like a tiny publisher? Because Galley Beggar Press was saying, that's like a huge amount of money for us to pay because we're like a small publisher. Deal with it when you're on the shortlist. If, if, if you're on a shortlisted book and you're a tiny Brutal. and you're a tiny publisher, I'm sure you'd be able to get a loan from somebody and like... Scrounge an extra... I, I would buy shares in those books if it got shortlisted. And I'd... Oh, well, you were a little more black and white than I thought you were going to be on this <laughs> issue. I thought there was going to be slightly more nuance in this discussion. But, all right. It's, 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 it's like... Up the money. It's like problems for lucky people. It's like a lucky person problem to have. Oh yeah, dear, my book's on the shortlist. Do but now, away with the meritocracy. They're they're going for the books that can pay, not no, necessarily the. They're not going best for the books, books that pay. No, they're not. They're not. They're not going for the books that can pay. And any book that gets shortlisted for for any of those prizes is making more than five thousand pound back, extra than they would have done. So it's paid for itself. All right, there you go. There you go. This finished. is a fun video. There's so many down thumbs going right now. But, um... I thought this was something we could have a little bit of a debate about, but mm. this is why it's really fun to be married to Scott because actually you can't argue with him about anything because he's just like shuts it down. This is the way it is. There you go. Should we move on to what we're reading? Yeah. I'm going to let you go first because actually um, I was leaning on your book and I've probably already showed half of them. There you go. Yeah. This is what we're reading this week. So I'm reading right? The Fox by Frederick Forsyth of Day of the Jackal fame. Other than The Day of the Jackal, I haven't read any of his books. Haven't you? I thought no. you'd read lots. No, I, I get him mixed up with no, Ken so. Follett, actually. Don't yeah, no, so so I haven't I haven't read it. I've read I'm about 10 pages in right now, so can't really make any judgments. It's, oh, okay. it's about an 18-year-old hacker, I think. Oh, hacker. It'd be interesting, because actually... Books by um, well-known authors don't normally tend to do well in the subject because you need to be reasonably technical. Whereas well-known oh, authors oh, are okay, actually okay. pretty pretty good at Generalist. writing, but not necessarily IT geeks. Wow! Well, so, so hopefully it'll be he brushed up, Frederick. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see. We'll find out. I am reading, or well, actually, I'm going to say I haven't started. I finished reading *The Ghost Tree* um, about two hours ago <laughs> by um, Barbara Erkstein. And now, or next, I'm going to read The Corset by Laura Purcell. And this is a Victorian murder mystery, mm. I think, with possibly a hint of the supernatural. So, um, trying to work out whether the imprisoned woman did, in fact, do what everyone says she did. Um, or did she do something worse? That's what I'm hoping for. I love it. I love it when things like that happen. So that's what I'm going to start reading. Um, she wrote, Laura Purcell wrote The Silent Companions, which was everywhere a couple of years ago. So there you go. Didn't read it, but this one sounds good. Looks good. Excellent. There you go. There you go. That's it. 
that's it. Um, we'll count the down thumbs in a minute. <laughs> When we finished, um, but we are really happy um, for everyone who's enjoyed it. So please do talk to us in the comments below. Um, tell us how many words you guessed, how many Scrabble words you got. That we would like to know. Did you beat Scott? I did all right. You did better than I thought you were going to get. The only I oh, know you didn't get the zombie one. You half got the zombie one, um, but yeah, did better. Um, and that's it. We're not going to go play Scrabble. I was going to say we're going to go have a game of Scrabble. We are not. Sorry, Dad. We only do it to humour him. Bless him. Sorry. Right. Um. That's it. We'll see you soon. Please do check out bookaxe.com and the apps. They're completely free. Thank you for watching. Bye.